interest rate holds, people spending less, and Airbnbs maybe coming to a stop in Toronto, Vancouver. Yeah, this is what we talk about with our good friend and broker owner, Roland Kim, right after this. All right, my friends, here we are with lots going on. This is really the first week of September, and I'm here with our good friend, Roland Kim, all the way from Vancouver. How are you doing, my man? I'm good, Gary. I hear both our provinces are being led by uh, superheroes that stop the interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> superheroes. They should both be wearing capes, both, Oops. if you're not familiar, uh, wrote letters to the Bank of Canada pleading them. And, and every which way up and down saying, do not raise the interest rate uh, September 6th. And of course, September 6th is today. And guess what happened? Nothing. Rates held. <laughs> Rates held. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of posturing saying, look what we did. Look what we did. I'm sure. I'm sure. But hey, uh, whenever a rate is held, that's always uh, a good sign in a sense or a good thing for obviously those that are on variable rate mortgages and everything else. What's uh, What's kind of the 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 word on the street out there in Vancouver at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I had a poll going in a couple of my social um, sites. I actually got to write down the the winners or the the contenders because um, it was, a, do you think it's going to go down, hold or go up? And all the people that picked the right one, I'm going to put in the draw for a couple of gift cards and have to get that sorted. But the majority of people were on a, on a hold platform. And so I think the consensus was that, um, it, you know, common sense has got to got to exist somewhere with the government and they're going to hold it because we are seeing in every facet um, people pulling back, contracting their spending and really getting aware of like, you know, what we're moving into, perhaps into like, you know, a very more stable, stagnant environment. And um, and so I'm really satisfied and I, you know, positively was expecting a hold because that was the only right answer. Um, we're already starting to see the interest rate impacts from last year. You know, it typically takes nine to 12 months to really see that trickle through the system. And I, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing, you know, clients we're still working with that thought they had a million five budget for a house selling, you know, a million one townhouse or a million two townhouse, the, the townhouse, I don't know if it'll even go for a million one. And now we're trying to find, you know, houses at um, a million three. So we're still trying, but the numbers have gotten so much harder where, you know, maybe we'll put a deal together and, and, and yet other clients have removed themselves from the plan. So they didn't do the upsize because, you know, the numbers aren't working for them now. And I'm hearing stories at the brokerage where, you know, we have 150 plus realtors working and um, stories like, you know, clients who sold their Mercedes uh, in order to get rid of the car loan to make, you know, the, the purchase work. And, and, it, and then, you know, they didn't move forward. And, and now they're kind of stuck with figuring out what they do on the car side. The point being, people are for the first time, I think, really needing to navigate a different environment and you know and and move up and down and around and sideways to get their financing done and to figure out you know how they're going to service higher uh, costs which is the reality that we're really feeling on a side note i'll eventually let you talk gary but on a side note um i don't know if you've ever taken the bc ferries have you from vancouver to the island oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah for sure just last yeah. year Perfect. And um, it used to be every time we'd go on there, when, especially before I was single and I didn't have to eat on the ferry, but with kids, it seems like you always have to eat. I was like, man, these prices are expensive. Like, it seems ridiculous. And now I went there and I'm like, wow, these prices are like good. They're like almost under market because they haven't raised them. And so you're going to get an Eggs Benny for like 17. And I've gotten so used to all the other restaurants so much higher that like an Eggs Benny now at Denny's is $20. And so that is showing you like everywhere we've now we've seen the price inflation trickle through you know like the painters i'm working with have higher prices the like everyone does and we're now just starting to navigate in that environment and, and a lot of costs are resetting not only the mortgage costs but like you know insurance and and a lot of annual fees that you remember a lower price than what you're paying now and so i think we're naturally going into spending less well spending more but getting less yeah yeah exactly spending more but getting less and and you and i were just having a, a great conversation before we hit record and we always get mad at ourselves we should just hit record but uh one of the one of those 
one of the common themes that I'm seeing out here, and I'm sure it's right across Canada, is, and we'll use the three thousand dollar mortgage payment. Uh, people aren't willing to have that increase in a sense, or in their budget increase. But if the home values change, they're just going to move that three thousand dollar mortgage payment to a new geographic location, right? Mm-hmm. They they don't want to take on more payment, but they're willing to sell their house today and move, you know, out out into some of the cheaper areas. I'm curious, and, and I here's what I'm really really curious on over the next call it 24, even 36 months, you know, people are often saying what happened in the, with the financial crisis or the housing market, the mortgage industry in 2008 to our big brother in the South or our cousins to the South, if you will, uh, with their adjustable rate mortgage, it's somewhat similar to how many of our current five-year mortgage rates are, people are on, you know, less than 2%. All of a sudden they got to, you know, in some cases, triple that that interest rate payment. I'm curious to see what that's going to happen to the market. You know, Roland and I aren't we we can't read the glass ball, or the, but we can kind of you know read the tea leaves and see what's going on. Are, are you seeing some nervous buyers or sellers in your market, or wh- where's that at at this moment? Yeah, I mean that is one of the areas where we're a little bit geographically different. Although, like you know, Toronto's huge, Vancouver's large. You have it seems a lot more varied inventory stock. So one of the challenges in Vancouver is, you know, if someone wants to move um, and take the three thousand dollar mortgage payment, they have to like drive three hours to find anything, right? And so I'm not seeing that turnover as much as I think you are that you previously offline were talking about. I'm seeing more. Um, like people's in the next two years, a lot of mortgages coming due and they're going to have to absorb the increase and adjust it in their lifestyle. And if we're totally honest, like the the example that you said about like sub two and then a triple, that's like, that's an extreme that is rare. Plus it would be two years from now, right? Really what we're seeing right now, if anyone's renewing right now, they're probably in the threes in our interest rate. And, and, and so it's, it's definitely higher. Um, but you know, they're, they're going up maybe 40% more in real money that they're paying out every month, maybe a bit more, but that's real, you know, that's real money that they're paying. However, in our landscape, you know, a house that a townhouse that might sell for one five is renting for 6,000. And unless you're in a believer of the market is retracting and it would have to retract, you know, in my opinion, 25 to 40% to gamble on selling exiting, becoming a renter, and then trying to rebuy into the market. So I'm not seeing that. What I'm really experiencing, just the beginnings, are a lot of um, financial, you know, bad habits or neutral habits are needing to be changed, and people are going to have to become more financially astute to stay in the same spot. But they don't have an easy option. Right, right. And so it's... um, it's, uh, yeah, that's, that, it's an interesting thing. We're just at the beginning points of really, you know, seeing what, uh, how that pans out. And, and you and I were, were chatting before and I, and I like your take on, excuse me, <clears throat> people talk about foreign money or new money coming into the area, whether it's from outside the country in, in that sort of thing, or even new to the actual area. So of course, over the last several years, both Vancouver and Toronto have, have had lots of international money or new money come to the area but i like your take explain your take on that new money as it kind of ripples out into call it the suburbs or not in those downtown cores yeah i mean it's kind of like my impression of of you know money liquidation and what i mean by that is in the in the new sense is if you look at vancouver 15 years ago the west side of vancouver there was a lot of at that point foreign money coming in and buying really deluxe large properties right and it was like coming in at prices that made the locals be like okay i'll sell for that price that's a that's an amazing price then they sell and they're like you know i'd like to stay in my community but there's no new duplexes or smaller houses there's no there's no inventory that was created and they sold without knowing where they're going and so they naturally took their buying budget and had to move east in Vancouver. So they're moving, you know, east of Canby Street and they're bringing in really strong money and buying the best houses in East Vancouver. And then the folks who live in East Vancouver, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to take that money because that's more than I think my house is worth. And then they have to move further east. And so the trickle effect continues. And then you combine that with COVID where, you know, people were able to relocate from 
a major city or a location and take their job to a smaller town, they bank a bunch of their cash, they buy at a smaller price point, they're winning. But the local people that were living there that were used to a house being 300,000 are like, when in the world do the houses get to 550? You know, I can't afford 550. And so that's what we're really starting to see where it, money has gotten so liquid and, and fluid that, you know, people in Vancouver that I've helped buy, you know, buy their way up over the last 15 years are moving to Moncton, moving to Nanaimo, moving, you know, to further east to Kelowna or, or Hope. And, and it's, you know, it's kind of chasing a better value for their dollar. And what the reality is, though, the market they move into, it displaces someone else that was going to, you know, buy that property at a lower price. And so I think we've just, in many ways, you know, melted, so to speak, an ice cube, and it will never be an ice cube anymore. Now it's, you know, it's it's a lake. So you got to maneuver within the lake and financial liquidity is here to stay because there's nothing that's going, you know, that's preventing a person from being able to relocate and still, you know, be successful. Yeah. And, and the, the key point there that you landed on was it when when I move my money, say, from Toronto or in Vancouver out to Hope or, or what have you, it, it displaces somebody in, in that local market, perhaps, that was looking mm-hmm. to make that same purchase. And and displace can be kind of a, that negative word, but uh, that's what happens. That's the reality of it, right? Yes. It, it's now you're bringing your your dollar goes much further in a market where it's obviously valued less, meaning the homes are valued less. So you sell your home in Vancouver for $2 million in hope you can buy uh, a few homes for that price almost, right? Yes. Here's my question or, or kind of comment. And, and I'm curious, I know here in the Toronto area, there's, there's a lack of, of not only affordable, but available uh, rentals units any you know whether it's a one bedroom apartment condo to you know a, a detached home are you s- similar inventory levels there are people do having to do multiple offers for for rental units yeah the rental market is still really tight we're starting to see like some pressure like a little bit of release come to it not so much from inventory hitting the market but like uh the the prices have escalated to a point where people are like reframing their desires, right? So the young person might have said, hey, I really want to go be independent in in downtown Vancouver and enjoy that lifestyle. And, you know, they were, you know, they were thinking that $2,300 was ridiculous for a one bedroom. And now at 3000, they're like, it simply doesn't work. Like I'm going to stay with my family in North Vancouver and and go on a different path, a different journey. And, um, and so I don't see the prices in the near term for rent pushing much further, but because there's a lack of inventory in both, you know, for sale and for rent, I think they're actually, they'll get maintained at these levels. Um, and so it's, I mean, everything comes back as we spoke about that. We've always been approaching real estate from controlling the demand and yet there's enough demand out there, even when they spike all the requirements on your lending practices when they, you know, when they're trying to cool off the, the the amount that you can raise the rent, market conditions, you know, find a way of squeezing through and, and pushing the boundary still. And so the sad part is it doesn't stop the current supply from getting consumed. It stops um, certain people from moving forward with their goals when really all we had to do was build, you know, like the answer is so simple, but it's not easy. And now you're like, you know, a 300 pound, five foot four person. And you want to be, you know, you want to be back to your 180. Like it's, it's doable, but it's not going to be easy, but we know how to do it. We've talked about it for 20 years. You know, we know that you got to like, you know, consume less and and put out more energy. And if you want to lose weight and we know this problem is not solved by controlling the demand, you got to build more. But no one's, you know, done it at, at a scale or really found all the different parties and brought them to the table and done it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's some interesting things here. This will be like a can of worms. So I, I dare open it, but I'm going to open it anyways. Uh, you know, and I know in Vancouver and definitely here in the Toronto area, obviously with raising interest rates and for those investors or or homeowners that have purchased or refinanced or took on new mortgages in the last couple of years, majority people took variable rate and we all we've you know it's like beating a dead horse that monthly payment has 
you know, risen, 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 risen. And where now you have investors choosing to sell their property because they're, at, they're, they're, they're underwater every month. But on the flip side, you also have a segment that we desperately need more rentals. Mm -hmm. it, there's such a lack of inventory for rental units. So here's what they're doing in New York City. And I know Vancouver and, and Toronto are not in New York City. However, it's the closest thing to in Canada to New York City from, from uh, valuations. In New York City, this was just announced uh, just yesterday or a couple of days ago. It's today, September 6th, uh, that they are implementing new, we'll call it bylaws for Airbnb or short-term rentals where you can now no longer rent a unit for less than 30 days. Now, there's some other mm -hmm. ramifications around that, but really what they're trying to do is provide an instant influx of rental units uh, mm -hmm. to, to the inventory levels. I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud. I'm curious. I wonder if either one of our cities will implement something like that. What do you think? I think we will. Definitely provincially, our housing minister is, is you know, I've listened to him a few times and certainly indicating there's a lot of things that um, they're getting stern on and no longer, you know, needing the the buy-in. So one of those is, uh, you know, they're, they're shortlisting. Um, I think we have like a dozen municipalities that they've given directions to build. And if they, you know, if they don't get a certain amount of inventory started, they're going to step in and help them figure that out. Um, and I know that, um, you know, Airbnbs are, are on the radar and that's kind of why I, a while ago, last month, I did a post on like, you know, are the gold rush days of Airbnb behind us? And I 1 million percent believe that I believe we're, you know, we're at the tip of a change, I think as simple as, you know, you got away with a lot in buildings that were turning a, a blind eye and now are getting very clear in, in, you know, they're themselves mandating a 30 day minimum in order to control it while still providing a little bit of flexibility beyond just, you know, regular rentals. And I think the province is going to step in and do something like that. Um, and in some ways it kind of makes sense. Uh, you know, I, I hate the idea of, of playing in, 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 you know, economics and I, I'm a real believer of letting the market find its balance, but we've been holding back inventory so long that the market is off balance, no matter what you want to say. And, you know, there's there's too many people that are, you know, not they're not in many ways, they're not getting exponentially more rent uh, from Airbnb, but they're renting it very, very limited. And so I do believe a lot of that will go back into the rental market and that will make a little bit of a difference. Um, and at the same time, I personally believe um, there'll be a lot less, you know, localish travel. I know a lot of you know, people in, in the lower mainland have had a great time in the last four or five years, you know, with lifestyle. And, and I personally am a believer that that is being pulled back. We just haven't seen it yet. The idea that, uh, you know, that concert tickets on average are 250 and up to a thousand. And now like, you know, going out to Cactus Club as a couple is a hundred bucks. Those, in many ways, I think we'll be talking about consumer trends in a couple of years having changed so dramatically. And so that being said, I do believe, you know, that the hotel inventory was really maxed and stretched. And that's why Airbnb was helpful and was consumed so effectively during COVID and since then. But that is driven by consumer spending that I think we're just at the at the infancy of noticing how it's going to change. Um and I think, you know, and, and, and we're being taken advantage of as consumers on that. And, and one thing I mean by that is like, for example, I just heard, I forget it was a double headliner, but um, a country group that is really, you know, selling nationally going to tour next year. They're going to play in Vancouver November of next year. And they sold tickets last Friday. So they, they're literally picking up millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars internet like nationally and, and into the states and they get to hold that money for a year we're allowing them to do that because we've stretched so far in wanting to like you know buy an experience and we're not yet accountable to that it should be it's ridiculous that you're giving someone you know seven hundred dollars for over a year for for a, a music concert and oh, yeah. but it's gotten there and i think we're you know we're at the tipping point of of that elastic being pulled back and starting to go the other way where 
you know, I, I think we'll be talking about concerts are, are, you know, difficult to sell out in three, four years because people will change their habits because they have to. I don't see foreclosures being the thing that is, you know, that is going to adjust people's uh, interest rate payments and lifestyle costs or like home costs. I just think they're going to get rid of a lot of lifestyle costs. And we haven't, you know, we've been in the other direction in the last four or five years. Yeah, there's there's some actually some really good points there, and and I know here here in Toronto we were all trying to get our Taylor Swift concert tickets because she announced a Toronto show, and and yeah, of course with fifty five thousand seats sold, I think five six shows. I can't remember how many shows. I should know this because my daughters were begging to get tickets. We all lined up to get them, and we couldn't get them. But you're right. So five shows times fifty five thousand. They're holding that for a year and 14 months. That's our money that, sh- that they get to hold, Ticketmaster gets to hold. And, and it's interesting. Uh, that's an interesting way to look at it, for sure. Absolutely, for sure. Our spending habits do need to change. Uh, our priorities, I think, need to change or get realigned in a sense and kind of bring it back down to you know taking care of ourselves first. And, uh, of course, housing is always number one at the top of that list. And... and for some, we get it. It's it's tough going, and for others, uh, we have the opportunity perhaps to provide not solutions to the whole, you know, real estate industry, but we do have solutions, and and we do we are in a position where uh, we can we can help uh, help others, and and that's my encouragement. Is I think out of this call, Roland, is for those of us that have been blessed, uh, look for ways to help, look for ways to to you know guide that it doesn't have to be financial help but sometimes you know just saying the right thing to the right person at the right time can change the world for that person right yeah i think of realtors kind of like captains of super yachts like they can't afford the super yacht themselves they probably have a you know a small sailboat at home when they have time off but the advice that they can give the uh you know the owner of the super yacht and they can navigate it and, and steer it and take control of it you know better than 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 the person who has the money and that's kind of the way I see a really great, effective realtor. They might not, you know, be navigating themselves in the same financial waters, but they're tooled with the, you know, with the skills of doing that. And so yeah. I think you it well. No, that's, that's, I love that analogy. Well said. Uh, a good realtor, a good, a good business owner, we'll call it like that, or entrepreneur knows how to connect people. And that's one of the, that's one of the great things that I love doing. I know you love doing. Uh, remind us how to get a hold of you. Really simple. You can find me on YouTube, Roland Kim Realtor, and otherwise just Google Roland Kim Realtor, and I'll come up in multiple forums. There you have it. Hopefully, hopefully the Superman forum. There you have it, my friends. Uh, that's Roland Kim. Of course, I'm Gary McGowan. We'll see everybody in our next video. Goodbye for now.